So I want to uh, adapt action research to the, the walled off model, you might say. That is, in other words, how to learn from your own actions so that you, um, you're not having to go back to a reference book all the time, but you, uh, and so you build up your own expertise, which is a very important process. Uh, so how teachers can learn from their own lessons. You thought you were giving lessons for children? Well, yes, but also for yourself. Right, and what I want to do that you won't find in the normal action research literature is to connect with the temperaments. So, uh, so I gave you the temperaments yesterday so you could begin to be familiar with them. So going back over it, sanguines, those who take an interest in everything, but not for long. And it's, it's very important to have such people taking an interest in the world. And in the DISC method, that's called influential. People are influential. That is influential because they know everybody's business and how to connect things together. Uh, so not that they're busybodies, but they're just interested in, in everyone. So they say, look, your interests are the same. You should talk together. You know, it's a, a very social, a very social aspect. The choleric, who wants to get things done and change the world, but doesn't worry too much about the cost or how it affects others. I'm sorry, I just trod on your toes, but look, it's got to be done. Put up with it. You know, that kind of thing. And the DISC system is called dominant. Um, yeah. And the melancholic who thinks deeply about the world, about life's questions, about life's problems, the political system, whatever, whatever, but sometimes doesn't notice what happens right in front of him. He's sort of thinking these things, reading a book, you know, he can sit reading a book and everything's going on around him, but this is this fascinating book that he's involved in and uh, there's mayhem going on around, doesn't notice. Um, one aspect of the melancholic that he's cautious, but also conscientious. Um, that's under the C, under the DISC system, is cautious, conscientious. And then the phlegmatic, who likes orderliness, and thus does not like unnecessary change. Change if it's necessary, but don't keep changing things just to keep the sanguines happy. You know, um, it's just... Let's have things ordered, and when it needs to change, and this really is an impulse change, then that's all right. Um, but you see, one aspect of the phlegmatic is they like to sit on a seat in the park and watch life go by. They're quite interested. They don't want to get up and play, but they love. They don't mind watching the children play and this or that couple walk past and love and you know whatever it is. They they're quite happy watching the world go by. So those are sort of different aspects of, um, and we can recognize each of those somewhere in our own self, I would hope. Can Rudolf Steiner wanted teachers to be able to experience and master all the temperaments, as well as recognize the temperaments as they're manifesting in children, either strongly or weakly or whatever, but, um, and to recognize the temperament as it's happening in themselves, to be self-aware, self-knowledge uh, as part of that. And he also wanted teachers to learn from their own experience. You see, you can't go to a training and say, right, I've learnt all the things. I've got a little book, um, kete or, or, you know, that's a Maori word for a basket. And you're just going to pull all these things out and teach them. And think, oh, my basket's empty. Now what am I going to do? It's, you've got to be, as it were, develop something so that you're, as it were, self-sustaining. Uh, and so that's an important thing of the whole element of freedom, is to be, get to the point where you can be self-generate. Um, and what I'm giving in this is a process that embodies both self-learning and the temperament. We're going to start this process at the end of the day, recall. 
Um, recall the events of the day with as much detail as possible, preferably in reverse. That's what we tried to do, remember, when we had the um, circle at the end of the day. Go backwards in reverse. Rudolf Stein suggests that because it sort of takes it out of the habit realm. You have to be a little bit more conscious about it. But, and yesterday we didn't ex exactly achieve that, but one of the things is not to make judgments, just what happened. You see, um, one of the mistakes that you can do is ask a Waldorf teacher, how was your day? Because they may ask a wonderful, oh, it was terrible. Those two things are judgments. Ask them, tell me what happened today, what did you do today, or whatever it is. Because that's the question here, what was it that was actually done? Just what happened in the recall? So it's a kind of factual thing. It's, it's a sort of you're sitting there and you're looking back over the day like a spectator. How did my day compare to my plan for the day? This now moves into a different thing, you might say, into the evening to reflecting. And now you're making judgments. Today, I started, I had a plan to do this, this, and this, and then something happened that disrupted the plan. And it either went haywire or it went better than what I planned or whatever. You can start to make judgments. You can see there's an element. So you can ask yourself questions. At what point did it happen? What was it that made the difference that I didn't foresee in my plan for the day? Maybe you didn't make a plan. You just said, I'm going to live the day as it comes. But So down here, you've gone from the dusk to the evening to reflect and ask yourself questions. So, some I'd some thing of questions. Did the lesson or activity go as planned? Sorry, there's supposed to be a question mark there. If not, where did it deviate? Was the result better or worse than planned? You don't always think it's not always worse. Sometimes something wonderful happens and you think, wow, I'll see if I can make use of that. Were there extraordinary circumstances? Could I have envisaged what happened? How could I have better prepared myself to cope? What do I do now? We've had the day. What about tomorrow? What am I going to do now? I've got to pick up from where we got to yesterday or at the end of the day, and the next day you're going to have to go from there. I can't sort of uh, say, oh, let's um, cancel yesterday and we'll start again. Sorry, it doesn't happen. What can I learn from the experience? How do I change or make plans for the next lesson or activity? Take these questions into sleep. So this is and thing that uh, something Rudolf Stein introduces that you don't find in the normal action research things is that uh, take it into sleep. And that will come back again to this thing, what is sleep? Why take a question into sleep? Thank you.